18 innings, well, maybe 17 innings if things go really well today. Vahe Gregorian, columnist from the Kansas City Star, is out for you here for all of it. I think so. Unless I, I can one, somehow find, you know, a, a theme that's going to hold up for the second game, no matter what. I think, but I think I'm in. No, Let's play two. Uh, I think the only writer I saw that didn't show up today was Jeffrey Flanagan, but I, uh, maybe he's <laughs> smarter than everybody else. Just take the day off. All right, Vahe, let's let's talk a little bit about this team. We'll get to Salvador Perez in a moment, but kind of seems like the same script in many ways as 2014, not just because the records are identical at this point, but because it feels like nobody really thinks this team, this team is going to do it outside of that clubhouse or Kansas City. You know, it's kind of funny. I think that's true still, right? And it, and it is a different team, but it is also a core of the same team. I mean, I think, is it six everyday guys? I think that, that are still the same guys, um, most of whom are farther advanced in their career, some of whom are not. Um, so that part of it, the doubt is still interesting. That's what's going to happen when you're 10 and 20 at the start. Um, the th I am a little fascinated, perhaps too much so, with the idea that they're 56 and 52 on the same day. That I think it's the same day they put, same record, same date, same record's date when they put Hosmer on the DL that year. What we don't know, of course, is, and we're going to get to this, but is one guy differently indispensable than, than another was that time and, and all the factors that go into that. And I think a lot of people would agree that maybe Salvador Perez may be the most difficult player to replace, but replacing Eric Hosmer like they did in 14 was a huge step in the right direction. But I think looking at this team, you know, the way they started, it's almost like they rolled their sleeves up after that horrible start in April, and they said, let's take off and do what we're capable of doing. I, I think that's right. Now, it, 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 check me on this, but I really believe the only time you really thought there was at least the only time I really thought there was trouble again was when they lost seven of eight. Mm -hmm. They had some other natural bumps in the season, but you know we've been thinking of them as streaky, and they sort of are, but really, they've been a pretty good team since they were 10 and 20, and they had what I think now we can look at as a natural dip in the season. Are they good enough to you know, get to the playoffs and make a run? That That's gonna be the, the mystery of the next couple months. All right, last thing real quick. Uh, Danny Duffy's on the hill today. He's beloved now in this town, but you had a chance to spend time, what was it, in the off season uh, with, with his family. I just wanna know what that was like. It was it was great fun. Uh, luckily, Danny sort of signed off on it and greased the skids for me, and his parents were very interesting and were, were very receptive to me coming out there. Spent a lot of time with them and their dogs, and uh, you know, they're both law enforcement. His mom was California Highway Patrol, and, and uh, I think, they, but also, not that that contradicts this, but warm and funny and interesting, and you can see where Danny comes from. Well, we always love having you on. Our good buddy, Vahe, he can write a story as well as anybody, and, and if you haven't checked out his, his column from, I think it was yesterday, uh, on Carrie Driscoll, the widow of Eric Driscoll, who uh, passed away, uh, incredible moving. I, I was definitely moved to tears and the importance of organ donation. So I encourage you to do that. Great job on that, my Thanks, friend. Joel. And we're, we're glad to have you out here. Thanks for having me.